Can you use number 14 AWG wire or do you have to use number 12 when you're wiring houses? Okay, so there's a little bit of a kind of back and forth that happens with this whole topic depending on where you live. And the reason is with electrical code that the AHJ or the authority having jurisdiction, um, the inspector permitting office, they have the final say over the whole thing. So there are some places around where I live that you're not allowed to use this. You have to use the number 12. They want 20 amp circuits and everything, but you can use this. It just kind of depends on the area you live. So we have some places where everything that's power that's coming off of a breaker, 20 amp breaker, number 12, which is good for 20 amps um, inside, you know, most residences, this 12 two specifically, um, we'll use everything on the power side. So like in between receptacles, in between switches, all of that, we'll do a number 12. And then we, since we're doing LED lighting, you get like a thousand LED lights, you know, re, like little recess cans. Um, and it's drawn like one amp total you know, or a fraction of an amp. So we can just use this because it's cheaper. And if we do all of the lighting in a massive custom home in number 14, like that could potentially be thousands of dollars saved, not having to use this wire. So the cost difference is there. It's still gonna work just fine. I mean, we probably even go smaller on the wire really. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll run all of the legs leaving a switch and we'll go up and we'll hit every single light through a whole area. Um, we might even do the like 14.3 for the travelers in between an area because it's still just controlling the lights. So the circuit is, is gonna maybe draw more if there's a lot of receptacles plugged in, but the actual uh, leg, the switch leg and all of the lights are not gonna draw that much. So we can use a smaller conductor size. Um, and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna break out how in houses we're using parallel circuits and current always flows in a parallel circuit in proportion to whatever the resistance of a specific leg of that parallel circuit is. It's not a series circuit, and in a series circuit, the total amount of current travels through the entire circuit. So this parallel setup that we do with receptacles and switches and lights allows us to have a certain amount of current on one portion of a circuit and less current on a different portion, and that's why it's okay to do this. So let's talk about that. When you have a parallel circuit, you don't just add up all the loads together to have like the, the whole circuit does not have the same amount of current flowing through it. In parallel, current flows based off of whatever the resistance or the load is. So from, from here, from the source all the way through this load, well, it would be through here. That's our first path of current. If we plug into this receptacle and we've got a motor, only this portion of the circuit has any current flowing on it. There's nothing being plugged in, turned on, anything over here. So right here, say we've got a five amp motor, we have five amps of current running through here. So say the next thing we wire to is another receptacle right here, and say we plug a toaster into that receptacle. Well, once we plug it in, now we have current flowing from here all the way through here. That's eight amps. So we have eight total amps flowing here in the bigger circuit, and we have five amps flowing here in the smaller circuit. So for right here, for like this portion and this portion through the source, we've got five plus eight. So we've got actually 13 amps flowing just right here. Only five amps is flowing through this and only eight amps is flowing through this. Now say we've, from that toaster, we moved on and we add uh, 12 two and we go over to a light switch. That light switch is right here. So from the light switch, we could even add another piece of 12 that goes to like another receptacle. So that would be this over here. And that's our total circuit. We've got one, two receptacle, we've got a switch and we've got a fourth receptacle. Well, say that we turn this light switch on. Now we have more current flowing through here, going all the way through, um, well, each one of these. But say that all of these uh, LED lights all together are one amp. It's probably gonna be a fraction. For only four lights, probably gonna be a fraction of an amp. But for just this portion where we've got the wire that leaves the switch leg that goes up into the ceiling, we only have one amp flowing for all of these lights. We don't need 20 amp wire. We don't even need 15 amp wire, really. Um, we probably could get away with like ethernet cable, you know, like really, really small wire. But what, what's important to note is that when you turn that one light switch off, 
Now this portion of the circuit right here has the eight that's flowing through the load plus the one that's flowing through the rest of this because right up here is where they all start to add together on this main branch. So once we turn this load on, now we have one amp flowing through here. We've got eight amps flowing through here and five amps flowing through here. So while we have one amp flowing through here um, and flowing through the top and bottom here, once we get to this portion, we've got the eight amps right here, plus we have the one amp from right here. So we actually have nine amps at this point flowing through, one amp flowing through right here. But right here, we've got this circuit plus this circuit plus this circuit. So we have the five amps right here. So we've got five plus eight plus one. That means we have a total of 14 amps flowing on the main branch, the main branch circuit. That's why I would size the whole branch circuit to be 20 amps because I know there's gonna be this additive effect. But when I'm at a switch leg, even if I have another thing over here that I plug in, like you notice I put zero amps because there's nothing plugged into that. So there's the, still all of this conductor over here that has no current flow on it at all because it's in parallel. But if I, uh, if I am trying to just worry about what's going on up here with these lights, I could run that whole thing in number 14. I could probably run it you know, like with anything, with like really, really small stuff. But that just goes to show that the main branch, that's why we hook this up to a 20 amp breaker and we run number 12. And same, you know, with the neutral, it's 12 too. So both of them are gonna be number 12. But the beginning of this circuit is gonna take on the brunt of, uh, you know, most of that current. And as we get further and further away down the branch, we're adding more to the beginning of the circuit, but it eventually keeps dropping off and dropping off the further down that we get. Now, the exception to that is say that we didn't have all of these things connected, but we plugged a 20, uh, like a, let's say like a 16 amp load. We've got a motor that we plug in here. This, once we plug that motor in, this means this entire branch is now gonna have 16 amps flowing through it. So that means anything else that we plug in, if we got five amps, then uh, that's gonna be 21 amps. So we're gonna have 21 amps once we plug this thing in. And over time, this breaker is gonna flow. So if we have another thing we plug in, you know, like we're adding another eight amps, we're getting up to like 30 amps, that breaker is gonna blow immediately. But it still doesn't change. This portion is still only gonna ever have one amp flowing through it. So that switch leg going up there, regardless what you're plugging in and the entire rest of the circuit, is not gonna have any more current flowing through the one that's going up into the ceiling to the lights. It's still just gonna be one amp. And you could probably add 40 LED lights and you might get like one or two amps. So it just goes to show that you can use smaller conductors, but you have to make sure that you're using them, the right rated equipment, the right conductors, stuff that your inspector's actually gonna pass. You don't wanna run ethernet cable to run a bunch of lights, you know? It's just not rated for that kind of a use. But in theory, the conductor size, the insulation, if you have insulation that can handle it, um, and you've got conductor size that you know you can actually hook up to a breaker and everything you're using listed and rated equipment um, you could use smaller conductors than that as well you could use like 16 18 20 you know what i mean because you don't have that big of a load on it um, so that's the parallel thing so hope that helps um, definitely check with the, your area to make sure that it's okay to be doing things like this. There are some ratings. If you look at 240.4, you can look into the overcurrent protection requirements. Having a breaker that's a little bit bigger than the size of the conductor for certain uh, instances, for certain situations under 800 amps, you can do that. Um, look into 210.21. 210.21 tells you that you can have a 15 amp circuit, you can have 15 or 20 amp devices. Sometimes you can have a 20 amp circuit and have 15 or 20 amp devices. Um, so your even your devices don't have to necessarily match what the conductor size or the breaker is. And then in 310.16, it actually talks about how to size conductors and there's a portion of it for Romex because Romex is a 60 degree conductor. Um, it shows you what your breaker sizes are supposed to be. So for 14, you have to have a 15 amp breaker. And for number 12, you have to have a 20 amp breaker. So hope that helped. Let me know if you guys have any comments, questions, all of that below. Love you crazy people. I'll see you in the next one.